If you were an astronaut, what kind of bread would you take on a space mission? When you consider that crumbs would be a terrible nuisance in zero gravity, it's easy to see why the flour tortilla is NASA's favorite space bread. La Reina Tortilla Factory in East Los Angeles, California, turns out over a million flour tortillas every day. To feed this nearly non-stop production, bulk flour and vegetable oil are stored in outdoor silos and pumped into the mixing stations inside. La Reina mixes the dough to their client specifications, adding baking soda or yeast, flavorings, and in some cases enzymes to extend the shelf life from the normal five days to 45 days or more for overseas clients. Workers drop the mixed dough through holes in the second floor to one of the 15 baking lines. This particular line is a hand stretch line. So uh, the dough that you saw being made in the mixers comes down to a rounder divider. And then it's proofed or aerated in these trays. And after they go from the trays, they're dusted with flour and put into kind of like a a rolling pin kind of process. And that goes through two kind of oval one way and oval the other way. So the ladies have to kind of make it round, obviously, and then put it through the system. It goes through the oven for about 30 seconds at 300 degrees or so, and then goes through the cooling conveyors. Much of the machinery at La Reina was adapted from other baking tools like pizza rollers by company founder Mauro Robles. Uh, my father came to the United States as an immigrant from Mexico. He met my mom at a small tortilla factory where he worked, and uh, that's how he got the idea of making tortillas. What do you, what do you think, Dad? How does that look? So this script that goes on, they have all the He went from corn tortillas at that factory to flour tortillas in his own business, and uh, that's how Lorena started. The first tortillas were made of ground corn a grain that was hybridized from wild grains around 3000 BC in Central America. Corn tortillas remain the bread of choice there. In Mexico, over 300 million are consumed every day. Today, Lorena makes equal numbers of flour and corn tortillas, but nearly all their corn tortillas are made into corn chips. They ship their wheat flour tortillas to all corners of the US, as well as to Europe, Japan, and China. While tortillas can be packed and shipped across the continent, other breads are made to be eaten the same day they are baked. At Masab, an Ethiopian restaurant in Los Angeles, California, customers are served one of the healthiest breads in the world, injera, made daily on the premises. Uh, this is uh, one of the uh, Ethiopian traditional restaurants. We serve all our guests with injera, what we call it. Injera is made with teff. Teff is the world's smallest grain. In fact, its name means easy to lose. It takes 125 grains of teff to equal one grain of wheat. But these tiny grains, grown almost entirely in the Ethiopian highlands, are packed with vitamins and minerals and are gluten-free. Once it's cooked and cooled, the spongy pancake-like bread has several uses. Once they prepare stews and they prepare it and bring it in traditional manner with big plate and everybody's around there and take a piece of injera and scoop on injera so to eat the stews. So we don't use no utensils, everybody use hands. That's how we use it traditionally. One special Ethiopian ritual is called Gershaw. It's considered a friendly gesture to feed a friend depending on the size of the bite. While injera is part of the social fabric of Ethiopia, bagels have evolved from European roll to American phenomenon. I like it warm. Uh, you know, some people say hot. I don't think a hot bagel is good, but a warm bagel, you know, that's, that's been baked and is warm inside of the crunch, that's what I like. Richard Friedman knows about bagels. He owns Brooklyn Bagel Bakery in downtown Los Angeles and has been around bagels all his life. My grandfather came to this country in the early 1900s uh, as a baker. He started the Bagel Bakers Union. It was one of New York's most exclusive unions. Only sons of members could become apprentices. 
like Richard's father. They rolled out strips of dough, and then that dough was wound around your fingers and cleaved to the bench. But that ended in the 60s, with a machine that could form some 400 bagels an hour. The front part of the machine is called the divider. And what that does, it cuts off the desired piece. And then that piece comes down the belt and winds around the mandrel and actually forms a circle. And that's called the former. Bagels are made with the same wheat-based flour as most breads. So it's the next step that really makes a bagel a bagel. Bagels are cooked in boiling water, which makes them unique. It stops the yeast action and also puts a shine on the bagel. It's the only bread product, probably, that is cooked in boiling water before it's baked. Bagels are said to have been invented by an Austrian baker in 1683, who wanted to give a gift to the King of Poland. The King was a great horseman, so the baker made a roll in the form of a stirrup. Today, Brooklyn Bagels bakes over two dozen different kinds. The water bagel, or the plain bagel, is still the most popular, and the second most popular would be onion. And probably after that, uh, cinnamon raisin has become very popular. We do not make uh, spinach and cheese. We, we draw the line somewhere. But, uh, we were making a lot more than they made uh, years ago. Yeah, if my father would see this today, he would, uh, he would probably say chocolate chip and strawberry. Uh, they, they wouldn't fly.